Hello, dear listeners. Uh, welcome to Bridging Voices, the video podcast of the Konrad Arnola Stiftung's Multinational Development Policy Dialogue here in Brussels. My name is Jan Leno. I am Program Manager for Foreign and Security Policy. And I'm very pleased uh, to host today Ms. Emanuela uh, Claudia Del Rey, who is the European Union Special Representative for the Sahel, previously Deputy Foreign Minister of Italy, as well as a renowned academic uh, in her field with extensive experience also from conflict regions. Thank you for coming today, Emanuela. Thank you. It is a pleasure to be with you. I would like to start uh, the discussion on the security situation in Sahel just with a little bit on a scene setting here. You've been a couple of years now the special representative uh, to the Sahel. What was the reason? Why did you like to engage with this region? Why did you become the USR? I have been engaged in this region for a long time for a number of reasons in different positions as well. Um, recently, as the Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs of Italy, of course, I engaged very much in the region because Italy is particularly engaged in the region. We, you already touched about it. Um, you said it's a very challenging security situation currently there. Could you maybe formulate the, what's the main challenges currently in the region? The Sahel, unfortunately, is afflicted by uh, several challenges, uh, starting from terrorism to food security to climate change that, uh, unfortunately, is one of the causes of a huge number of uh, displaced people and many other uh, important uh, challenges that, con con considering the situation which is already very difficult for the, mm, the conditions of the territory and also the conditions of the population, obviously creates a climate in which it is very difficult to intervene in a, in a very um, effective way unless uh, there is a proper strategy. And this is why the European Union, for instance, has defined its integrated strategy for the Sahel in 2021 to be sure that we can uh, address all the problems, starting from security, but also concentrating very much on development and, in particular, on humanitarian uh, aid, which is, at the moment, uh, the most important uh, element for us of intervention, because the emergency is uh, incredibly serious and and it becomes um, even more serious every day. And I talk about, as I said, the needs of the population, which is a population that is particularly suffering at the moment for the reasons I mentioned in synthesis. You, you mentioned already the different aspects, the security aspects, development aspects, uh, humanitarian uh, situation on the ground. Um, the European Union has several missions uh, on the ground, both civilian and military missions. Could you a little bit characterize what are the missions and what are the main uh, goals? What do they uh, aim to achieve? When uh, we look at the region, sometimes we don't have uh, the, the uh, an image of uh, a region where many things are happening. In reality, the region is very crowded. Many things are happening, luckily enough, because I just said that, that the region really needs a lot of attention. And uh, therefore, if we just look at the activities of the European Union, we come to realize that there are very many in many sectors. Uh, they're multi-dimensional, multi-level, with uh, the involvement of many uh, member states. We have. Uh, for instance, uh, missions that have been uh, ongoing for a long time, EUTM, which is the European Union Training Mission in Mali, for instance, which is unfortunately now suspended, but has it has trained uh, more than 18,000 uh, Malian soldiers over the years. Uh, the same, I could say, about EUCAP uh, Mali, which is the capacity building mission of the European Union in Mali, which is present also in uh, Niger. There are many other uh, exercises that are particularly relevant and are now uh, undergoing a certain transformation. For instance, we are inaugurating in the next few days a new uh, European Union training mission in Niger, which is uh, going to be mm, central to the region for what uh, comes to uh, military training and also training in human rights. So as you can see, I could go on uh, with a long list, but just to make it brief, I can say that in reality we are really very present, not to mention the huge patrimony of uh, uh, projects that we have in the, f in the domain of development, which cover everything from health to education to agriculture to help for women, uh, the youth, 
In fact, as I said, despite the fact that we feel that uh, the security is uh, really making a, gr a big condition on all that we do, in reality we are very present and things are ongoing with a huge uh, engine of uh, uh, will, especially also uh, from the member states, political will as well as concrete will that really can make the difference for the future of uh, this uh, difficult uh, region. You mentioned the, the AOCAP mission uh, missions and then as well as the training missions and the new missions in Niger. These are still focused more on training aspects, whereas looking at some other European Union member states, for example, France had more active uh, missions on the ground. How do you see these? Uh, is, is the training enough to challenge, uh, to, to, uh, to help the countries tackle the security uh, problems that they face? There is an ongoing discussion on uh, uh, the methodology that we have to apply to help the countries. And I have to say that also um, through myself, because this is my role, our dialogue with the leadership in each of the five countries of the Sahel is very intense. And we try to identify the real uh, issues, the real needs, and we discuss uh, all, all of this with our partners because don't forget that we call the countries of the Sahel partners. And also, of course, we discuss it within the 27 member states of the European Union because we have to take decisions all together. Uh, in the end, I can say that, yes, uh, we are very well aware of the fact that we need to continue to be by the side of the population, and this is why we always respond with humanitarian aid. But we also know that there is a strong pressure from the countries of the Sahel to get help in terms of military support and also in terms of uh, uh, concrete uh, instruments to, uh, to, to help their fight against uh, security threats. We are discussing these things. For instance, there is a mission, technical mission, that is going to Burkina Faso at the moment. There are also other activities, dialogue, uh, discussions. We are providing a, a lot of equipment, for instance, military equipment, which is uh, uh, absolutely essential. But we are also trying to follow uh, a certain principle, which is the principle of ownership, by which we, we would like, and the countries themselves would like, to be able to uh, manage their own problems by themselves. So for us, the principle is to accompany the process, uh, not, not to impose or not to uh, be uh, the, 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 uh, the only um, executors of, of, the, the, of the processes. So it is a delicate issue, but we are uh, discussing these things. And in terms of what we are doing, we are already doing a lot. But of course, uh, the threats are uh, increasing, and therefore we will have to adjust our, our response to the needs that come from the countries of the Sahel in an adequate way.